On 1st July 2016, we launched the Musculoskeletal Sciences ACP, an academic clinical program that aims to promote advances for the musculoskeletal specialties within the surgical community. Our methods and approach remain comprehensive, but our goal has always been simple, to achieve continual improvements in clinical outcomes and integrated clinical care for our patients. We aim to create a sustainable culture of research and development in the areas of biomechanics, cellular and tissue therapy, outcomes research and device development. Stem cell treatment harnesses the powerful properties of such cells for tissue regeneration, be it extensive burns, damaged joints or fractures. All of us have stem cells and new technology have enabled us to harvest, isolate and purify them for use. Today, we are enlarging its use for ageing conditions such as arthritis or even rejuvenation of facial skin. The SGH Skin Bank Unit at Skin Culture Lab is part of the National Burn Centre to treat severe burns in Singapore and the Southeast Asia region. While we are able to provide donated skin and even grow a patient's own skin to treat large burns, challenges still remain. We still have to deal with severe scarring and contracture, as well as permanent loss of hair and sweat glands in very deep wounds. Therefore, we are constantly seeking new solutions through tissue engineering and stem cell research to find advanced yet cost-effective treatments for wound regeneration. We hope these treatments will reach patients quickly in the near future. We are very proud to have various collaborators, such as that from the universities and also from the industry, to help to come up with innovative ways to help treat knee injuries. For example, our collaborations with the University of Singapore and also some industry collaborators have given us an access to stem cells, various sources of stem cells and stem cell derivatives that can be injected into the knee to help regenerate cartilage, meniscus or ligaments. With these injectables, patients may not need to go through surgery, but with one injectable, they may actually help recover and go back to their sporting lifestyle or their active lifestyle prior to their injury. We are extremely interested in 3D printing, process engineering and technology, as well as artificial intelligence. Uh, I think the key word here is bench to bedside translation of basic science. What struck me in 40 years of uh, practice in medicine is that it is very culture based. Different people, different parts of the world, even different regions of the same part of the world, has a very different expectation and usage of healthcare. So it is very important that we develop a bridge or a way of translating basic science to clinical care. We are currently looking at using 3D printed uh, braces for the simultaneous correction of knee fixed flexion deformities as well as the um, use of um, all these segmented 3D models in virtual reality, augmented reality for surgical stimulation as well as, as a resident education. So in my field of practice, I deal with a lot of complex limb deformities in children. So what is particularly useful with 3D printing is that with 3D modelling, we are able to do two things. One, we can have a very accurate assessment of the deformity in all three planes. And number two is um, we are able to do a surgery simulation prior to the op itself. We were one of the first uh, within the orthopedics field to try to incorporate a formal workflow and integrating 3D printing into our clinical practice. And what that really translates to is that the patients will have decreased surgery time, um, decreased complications and overall um, much better outcomes. Nasal stents have been proven to improve the nasal contours of the patient after cleft lip and nose repair surgery. I used the 3D scanner used by the orthodontist to scan a positive image of the nasal stent. Then I used another program to make a negative mold of the stent and split it into parts. After that, I placed silicon cement within the mold to recreate the positive image of the nasal stent. This will be helpful in countries with no access to such nasal stents as they are quite costly. Ear moulding is an effective non-surgical treatment for newborns with ear deformities. Our department was the first to start ear moulding back in 2013 in Singapore. In our study, we identified two main problems 
with the old splint and we came up with this design to address them. 3D printing was key to coming up with different prototypes before reaching the final design. It has enabled us to check the fit of each design and arriving at the right sizes to fit infant ears. It also helped us to finalise the right compliance and hardness of the silicone for the splint. Biomechanics is the application of the science of mechanics to the human musculoskeletal system. Our biomechanics research includes, firstly, studying how the various surgical options affect different musculoskeletal injuries. Secondly, devising new surgical techniques. Thirdly, designing new implants and studying how these implants influence the kinetics and kinematics of the body. And finally, studying how to improve sports and training techniques. Our facilities here in academia to do cadaveric biomechanical testing includes the conventional Instron machines, the newly acquired robot arm, motion capture systems, as well as computational modelling. The computing station is equipped with high-performance computers and advanced software such as Linux for 3D model reconstructions of CT and MRI scan images. Other software such as ANSYS and MELE is also available for pursuing research in multi-physics with finite element analysis, computational fluid simulation and artificial intelligence modeling. Using robots to simulate complex human joints began sometime between the 1980s and the 1990s. The technological advancement of industrial robots has allowed increasingly complex loading regimes to be applied to various joints and tissues. This implies that for the complex physiologic loading that is applied to an intact joint, a similar 3D motion can be repeated in a partially dissected joint. The ability to reproduce the same 3D motion is very much appreciated by researchers as this allows for the sequential removal of structures from a joint to determine their contribution to joint biomechanics. Primarily, the simulator will facilitate cutting-edge research in biomechanics across the specialties of orthopedics, hand and plastic reconstruction, aesthetic or plastic surgeries. The simulator allows us to take a strong leap from traditional methodologies to more robust methodologies in biomechanics research. This puts us in a strategic position to provide a platform for potential clinician scientists and innovators from within our academic clinical program to embark on biomechanics research. Cadaveric research is an important component of orthopedic surgery in the pursuit of academic medicine because it is how new cutting-edge techniques and innovative procedures for spine, shoulders, knees and ankles are perfected. It is also a means for the clinicians to conduct research to continually improve patient safety and clinical outcomes. Health services research allows us to identify the most effective ways to organise, manage, finance and deliver high quality care. Our projects often involve a combination of expertise from both clinical and non-clinical fields such as medicine, nursing, psychology, sociology and economics. We collaborate with various agencies such as the Ministry of Health and Duke NUS Medical School to drive value-driven care initiatives and electronic patient-reported outcome measures including for total knee and hip replacements, hip fractures and spinal fusion. The SGH Orthopaedic Diagnostic Centre, or ODC, primarily serves as an assessment and education centre for orthopaedic surgical patients. The team conducts pre- and post-operative functional assessments of the patients as an independent objective evaluation of the patient's functional progress and ability to return to daily function. To maintain a reliable and robust registry, the ODC makes use of internationally approved array of patient-reported outcomes measures. The aim, looking ahead, is to expand ODC's current capability in collecting measured outcome scores for patients across all three disciplines within the musculoskeletal sciences. Busy individuals with a lack of time or the motivation to exercise 
can embark on a sprint interval training that has proven to increase cardiorespiratory fitness and leg strength. The six weeks regimen involves all out cycling sprint of 30 seconds three times a day, morning, afternoon, and evening for three times a week. Sprint interval training will lead to improved cardiovascular conditioning, known to be one of the strongest prognostic markers for cardiovascular health and premature death. With just four and a half minutes of all out exercise per week, this has the potential to break down the most common barrier to exercise, the lack of time, while reaping the health benefits. We have healthcare professionals from different disciplines focusing on different aspects of patient care. Having a multidisciplinary team enables personalised treatment and integrated and holistic care of the patient's health. Now this is increasingly important in today's ageing population where an increasing proportion of our patients are elderly and have complex or multiple medical conditions. These initiatives add value to both our cluster and our nation's healthcare ecosystem. They advance our cause as a renowned authority in rare musculoskeletal diseases and give us a competitive edge in musculoskeletal outcomes research. We have also pioneered MSK robotic capabilities for biomechanics research in the ASEAN region. We have given ourselves the right platform for collaboration and regional leadership. Our efforts allow us to implement value-driven practices in healthcare and drive innovation in patient care and research. Ultimately, we aim to use novel technologies and translational research to ensure the highest quality care for our musculoskeletal patients and aspire to be a center of excellence in Singapore's healthcare ecosystem.